everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 26th of October to November 2nd, 2019. This is where I talk about celestial transits that affect us all, all zodiac signs. So what do we have this week? Well, first of all, if you've been feeling like you are getting ready to burst, if you want to blow off steam, if you feel like things have been stuck, well, that is intensifying until the 27th, until Sunday, and then it's going to cool down as we're heading into that exact square between Mars, the planet of all male energy and attributes, so that on the positive side is entrepreneurship and forward movement and defense and the ability to be one's, to, to be one's self you know to be independent that's Mars uh, but on the lesser positive side of things that's aggression and over sexuality and passion and the need to get immediate gratification and an inability to make consent and uh, Mars is in charge of any individuation process that we are passing through in our lives and as it squares Saturn the old teacher so the god of war the young warrior squares the old teacher one says I want to go the other says wait one says now the other says later one says I'm ready the other says no you're not and they could get into that struggle and we could feel as if we want things to already fall through to get to that new level but they're still pressuring you and they're still not actually manifesting in the way that you wanted them to manifest or as easily as you wanted them to manifest I want you to remember that the only way that coal is turned into diamonds is with pressure and that's pretty much the same thing for us humans we are being put under pressure in order to transcend and evolve. And this is really a time that we need to rethink our actions and make sure that our actions are not hurting either ourselves or the people closest to us. That we are not destroying something that is actually of value. That our anger and frustration of the status quo doesn't actually make it take make us take it out on people close to us and blame them for it so only a day after on the 28th that's monday we have a new moon in the fourth degree 25 minute of scorpio and that new moon is a very transformative new moon so already from the 28th we could feel as if transformation and movement and, and changes are already heightened in our life and these changes could feel like instability is raising up its um, uncomfortable head in your life you know and my aim is to tell you don't look for stability look for an upgrade my aim is to tell you to let yourself go not don't grab it with your fingers and nails don't dig in your heels don't use any more metaphors, Boaz. <laughs> Let yourself change. I mean, willingly swim into that whirlpool, understanding that this is a time of transmutation. And do that in a way that isn't angry. Not with yourself, not with the universe, and not with people around you. Things change. And this is a cycle, a lunar cycle, that talks about intense changes and transformation and the fact that uh, uh, astronomically the planet Uranus that rules uh, the Aquarian uh, sign is on its closest approach to Earth it's physically very close to Earth and it is opposed by the Sun that means that it is fully illuminated and all that light is bouncing back and we can see it here on earth it's too far out for us to see with the naked eye 
but the energy is still there both the the physical nearness and the light bouncing off the solar light bouncing off so we have a transformative Scorpio new moon opposed exactly um, a few minutes difference you know really exactly I think it's 20 minutes different it's in the same degree by the planet Uranus so there's going to be rapid changes throughout the next three and a half weeks here I'm saying it now what we need to do is get in sync with that I don't know if you saw um, surfers in the ocean uh, uh, paddling to get in a certain rhythm in a certain velocity with the wave they're trying to catch in order to at the right moment that they are in sync jump up on the board and actually let that wave let the energy of that wave take them to that, that beach you know that that palm trees in the distance those palm trees in the distance instead of rowing now of course they want to catch the wave they don't want to get to the beach but um, what I'm saying is is that this is a transformative time that you could either tumble dry in the wave until you reach the sand tumble wet not tumble dry <laughs> I'm sorry tumble wet um, or you could surf it and that requires just the right amount of letting yourself go of letting yourself change of understanding that there's things within you that are imperfect that still need an upgrade and that could come actually as something beautiful and something wonderful in your life we're having this a conjunction between the planet of communication and interaction mercury and the planet of value and self-value and relationships and love and money venus satisfaction so they're together and they're coming together on this very special day on the 27th degree of scorpio just as mercury is starting to retrograde backward and it's going to retrograde until october 21st until uh, November 21st, back in the 11th degree of Scorpio. Then it's going to start heading back. But the fact that Venus is greeting Mercury on the day of its retrograde, entering its retrograde, first of all implies that this retrograde can do a lot with intimacy and partnership, both on a professional and an intimate level. It could do a lot with power and money. And it could do a lot with value and self-value. And let yourself change. Don't be overly dramatic and overly transformative. Here I'm saying it again, don't throw away babies with bath waters. <laughs> but do allow yourself to walk forward. And take your strength within your own two hands. I mean, inner strength is what, what it's all about through the spirit if we become too obsessed with relying on others too symbiotic and that's a, a certain danger with this moon then we can alienate people on the other hand because of that opposition to Uranus not only alienation is possible but we can actually choose to alienate others in our life because I understand I don't want to be in this relationship boom I cut it I understand this job isn't right for me boom I got it without even thinking of the strategic implications or how this person might feel that a person that was very close to him in his life very close to her in his life in her life that was very much familiar and intimate is suddenly a cold stone wall autonomous to the former symbiosis that was taking place so watch out from these kinds of things and if, if that is something that comes towards you in your life again accept it as a blessed change as a good positive transformation that is actually going to cause that Phoenix to rise 
from these ashes we've been dealing with over the last period. And Friday the 1st, I just want to have a few more words about that Mercury retrograde. The Mercury retrograde is a time to rethink things. It is a time to look at all this information we accumulated and actually process it in a different way. Take a different viewpoint. This is a time not to stop what you're doing, not to not sign deals or not breathe or not buy anything, but actually be more... Uh, uh, about the smaller details be more about logic and some people who are frustrated with Mercury regularly are very happy with a Mercury retrograde because that's when things fall into place for them You're, yours truly included you know I've signed my last two apartments rental in a Mercury retrograde I bought a car in a retro in Mercury retrograde and I, I, I've, I've traveled on a Mercury retrograde, I've um, made courses on a Mer Mercury retrograde, and in fact, these courses opening up with me, hello Bert, uh, opening up with me uh, are starting in beginning of November in a Mercury retrograde. So for me, a Mercury retrograde is a wonderful time in which things are actually falling into place. That I can take this Mercury and Taurus that I have that is so phlegmatic, and make it a little scorpionic. Revolutionize and transform things a little bit. So it's all about working differently with your Mercury. And it depends how your Mercury in your natal chart is feeling and what's his character or her character. About Mercury, we don't know it's totally androgynous. The trickster. Um, you never know if it's a boy or a girl. Anyway, Friday, the 1st of uh, November is a wonderful day, both between males and females. It could be great. There's a sextile between the sun and the moon. And Venus is heading into Sagittarius. Wonderful for actually enhancing romance and expanding relationships or expanding anything related to your income. Just don't be overly optimistic and don't spend too much money don't overindulge i love it when venus goes into the sign of sagittarius because i know that sagittarius rules my second house of assets and money and if venus comes into my second house it's supposed to bring some of the bounty uh, of a venusian bounty along with it to my uh, material world and um I've just decided that because Venus is heading into Sagittarius, I'm going to give over the next week a 20% discount on all personal readings with me. <coughs> Excuse me. If you call and schedule for the next three weeks, uh, in the next seven days, that means you have to call and schedule for the next three weeks before the next video comes out next week. You'll get a 20% discount by mentioning Venus in Sagittarius. So, there you go. Um, working with the signs. I know that money is supposed to come in. I'm actually working with it. I'm contributing my part to actually making this a reality. And on the other hand, if I knew that something bad is you know, or challenging is happening in my chart, I would find a way to see that symbol in a positive manner and try to manifest that as much as I can. So other than what I told you, I just want to talk about uh, Tuesday the 29th. It's a positive day um, with a conjunction with the Moon and Venus and Mercury while trining Neptune and sextiling Pluto. Beautiful, beautiful for that transformation that I was talking about and beautiful for anything that you want to explore regarding um, spirit and mysticism, nature, uh, art, and uh, things like that. But there is a Queen Conks between Mars 
and Neptune that day, exact. And the quincunx is a chironic, karmatic aspect that talks about leaving behind things that are not positive, beneficial for our future. And really recalibrating ourselves and, and focusing ourselves on doing less, but less that is much better for us and for the people around us that is healing in some way by moving away from some tendencies, behaviors, or things that we did. Um, so my advice to that day is don't try and do everything. Don't try and grab everything and put it in the bag as fast as possible. No. If you want that day to be successful, if you want that transformation to be successful, if you want that expansion to be successful, if you want that love to be successful, whatever it is you're working on, know to put the less important stuff behind, to overlook it if you need to, to uh, really concentrate on what is important and be flexible about the rest. So, and move away from the rest as well, you know. I want to remind you that there are groups starting with me in beginning of November for all levels. There are private lessons and you could study with me from wherever you are around the world. So groups and private lessons. And as you know, you have a 20% uh, discount on all readings for the next week. May we all prosper financially, emotionally, mentally. And may we utilize that prosperity to heighten the light in our life and in the life of our environment and the people around us, the world and humanity. May we all live long and prosper. Thank you for watching, sharing and commenting on these videos.